All right, folks, welcome back. We're joined by a former governor of the state of New York, served three terms, and he's a founder of uh, and chairman of Pataki Cahill Group, uh, dot com. And he's Governor George Pataki, possible presidential candidate who has formed a brand new PAC. Welcome, sir. Always Steve, good to see you. Nice being with you. All right, you. Uh, I love the name of the pack, We the People, Not Washington. Exactly that's, right. That's your message. Uh, well, it is. I think Washington has not just grown too big, too powerful, too expensive, too intrusive. It also is now dominated by interest groups that really uh, convince the politicians to act in their interest and not in our interest. And we got to take Washington back. We have to reduce its size, of course, but we also have to devolve power from Washington to the states and the people. Do we take the, uh, the announcement of this pack? Uh, as another step closer to announcing uh, for president? It is an important step and you know we have these ridiculous campaign finance laws and that's why no one is actually a candidate and but for those laws I could well be a candidate now. Uh, and then so so what's your anticipated I mean when uh, under the law uh, when when you can announce uh, what you know when, when can you, you know, announce? You know we, we don't have I wish I could give you yeah. a big scoop here yeah, today yeah. Steve but we just don't have a time frame. Yeah. I just spent a couple of days in New Hampshire I'm going out to Iowa uh, uh, next week and uh, going to be uh, working hard making the case for change in Washington and to take this country back for the states and the people. All right. Well, you know, you, you're talking about that. There's some uh, news today. Washington Post has this story and everybody's picking up on it. The Clinton Foundation, we've heard about uh, that they've started once again, we were told, accepting foreign donations, even though she may run for president. But now the story is broke that they were accepting donations uh, in violation of State Department rules and regulations while she was Secretary of State from foreign nations. Yeah. How how, how how could anybody withstand a fair scrutiny of that? It's outrageous. You know, not only, first of all, doing it is wrong. How can you be an objective Secretary of State when your family is taking in tens of millions from a government where you're influencing America's relationship with that government? And if, in fact, it violated State Department regulations, then uh, what are the consequences? You, you just can't have the most important foreign policy official in our government being influenced by foreign governments. If it was a violation of State State Department rules, should that be the end of her possible candidacy? You know, ultimately it's up to the people, but I would certainly hope that people would take a look and say, this is something that is across the line, unacceptable, and we need someone who's going to never be influenced unduly by outside money, particularly from a foreign country. You, Rudy Giuliani made comments uh, to an event you were invited to, couldn't right. make, and uh, you know, we had Larry Kudlow on who organizes it uh, the other yes. day, and he said if he had to do all over again, knowing what he knows, he would still invite Giuliani and ask him to, to speak. Um, what would you make of, of what Rudy said? And what would you make of the reaction by the you know, media? First, I understand. I mean, I don't question uh, President Obama's love for the country, but I understand Rudy's reaction because we, he and I were at ground zero on September 11th. We knew some of those who died in those horrible attacks. And it's not something that we saw on TV. We experienced it live. And when we see a president who doesn't stand up for America, who doesn't even acknowledge that these radical groups are radical Islamists and refuses to acknowledge that, when we have a president who's committed to reducing our military to pre-World War II size, when we're facing this risk, of course we have to doubt certainly his policies and certainly his commitment to doing everything as president he can to protecting this country. And it was 22 years ago today, today. that the World Trade Center was hit for the first time. Uh, and I'm glad that the 9-11 Museum is, is having, a, they're honoring that event and they're having family members. And I think uh, not enough attention is paid to that. I remember driving to work from Brooklyn uh, to Jersey and I obviously couldn't take my usual route. I was detoured, et cetera, but I could see the, the smoke, you know, rising. Yeah. I believe if, if, I, if my recollection is correct from the top uh, of, of the uh, Trade Center while I was on the highway driving, uh, um, and it's just, uh, we, we need to remember that that happened as well. That, that happened 22 years ago today. And it wasn't just a random bombing. It was a bombing by a radical Islamist group. And sadly, the reaction uh, f until September 11th was to treat it, uh, treat it as a criminal right, act, right. as opposed to an act of barbaric terrorism. And 
uh, fortunately, after September 11th, we treated these terrorists as illegal enemy aliens. We didn't give them Miranda warnings. Until uh, now. Uh, until, until now. Until 09. And yeah. now we're doing it again. Yep. And, and we made that mistake once before. And to make it again, to me, just poses a real threat to the safety of the people of America. You're not surprised, I would assume, we have less than a minute by the uh, rest of the three uh, Brooklyn... Nah, it, it's, it's always disturbing, but it's not shocking. We know ISIS has great social media, media capability and is recruiting throughout the West, including in the United States. Yeah, it's, uh, it's scary. I mean, I, I grew up in Brooklyn. They say Avenue O and East 10th Street. I mean, my goodness, I go to visit my mom. I pass right by that area every time I go. It's uh, You never know. And uh, Thank God for the NYPD. Yeah, oh yeah. But we have got to take out those ISIS camps over there. Absolutely. Good luck, sir. Thank you for coming in. Thank Governor you, George Pataki, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we will be back uh, with uh, much, much more of the Steve Malzberg Show. Of course, only, exclusively, right here on Newsmax Television. So don't go away.